Bright V. Keen for Christ. What's going on, my fellow brigaders? Um, one of the things that we wanted to do for all of our young men and our alumni and everybody that's associated with Brigade is to um, look into a RD's life, regional director's life, and for a regional director to um, share um, an experience with you. So, um, <laughs> when they title this, it should be titled The Story of a Hundred Dollar Bill. Uh, it's a very unique story, and I guess the lesson in it is um, you reap what you sow. Um, I'm, I'm the regional director from the Midwest Division, but um, I was born and raised in Baltimore, Maryland. I'm in the inner city of Baltimore. That's where I was born and raised. And um, I didn't move into here officially until like into the Midwest region until about 2015. Um, it's 2020, and the story that I'm going to tell you um, took place about maybe 17 to 18 years ago, way before I started following Christ. I've been following Christ now for about 10 to 11 years, but before that, 18 years ago. Uh, maybe it was 2002, 2003. Details are fuzzy as far as exactly what date, but I do remember exactly what happened. And here, here, here's what happened. So I used to work at a bank. Um, the name of the bank, I can't remember. Uh, it wasn't a major bank. It was more or less a, a bank, like a, 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 a bank that was underneath, uh, underneath another bank. But but the main thing of the bank where they processed mortgages and, and they did other things. And, and, and one of the things that they did was when a person paid their mortgage, it would, it would come through your station, right? And you would take out the mortgage, the process, whatever it was, and you would submit it. So that person's mortgage could be paid. That was just it. And one of the things um, that would be on the, the letters, uh, well, when, when, when the people got their mortgages, one of the things that would be on there is do not send cash, right? Because cash can, you know, get messed up or it might not get all accounted for. So I always say, hey, send a check. But lo and behold, you would have people who would randomly send cash. They would send money through this uh, um, to the company and then we would process it. And I have been working there for several months and everything was fine. Well, a couple of my friends called me and um, told me that they were going um, going out that night to hang out. And um, I hadn't got paid yet, so I figured, you know, how do I get any money, right? You know, I'm calling around. I can't borrow no money. Uh, back then, I wasn't good with money. I was just um, a young man in my early 20s um, living, living my life, right? So I'm at work, and an envelope comes through, opens up. And inside, it's about $1,400 worth of cash. The person's mortgage was about maybe um, maybe 13 something. So I figured, okay, if I take 100, man, this person might be off, but they won't be way off. And they could probably send 100 back in or later I can act like I dropped 100 somewhere and I found it later and I can replace it. But at least I will be able to go out that night. Now, up until now in my life, I had never stole anything. This is just honest. I just wasn't a person that would steal. Um, and the whole time I did it, I didn't know Christ didn't, but something was just like, you shouldn't do this. But I did it anyway. Just decided, hey, you know what? I'm going to take it. And um, I'm not going to think twice. Of, well, I thought about it. I did think about it. I did think about it. But I took it anyway and uh, processed the rest of the money. Found a way to take it without getting caught on the camera. Planned out everything correctly. And that night, went out and had a great time. So, didn't think anything about it. Um, nobody said anything. Went back to work. And after a couple of days, you know, nobody came to me about it. I didn't get caught on camera because by now, right, somebody would have came and said something. However, though, right, however, um, I think maybe a about a week later, maybe two weeks later, I remember getting paid, and I do remember my um, check was for about thirteen hundred dollars. I had a pretty good check, and um, I, I went to the mall. And of course, you know, young man, I went shopping, right, buying clothes. Um, you know, I had plans on going out later that night. I was going to have a ball, 
right? No cares in the world. Guess what? Didn't even think about paying that hundred dollars back, right? So went to the mall, and one of the things that we always do is you separate your food money from your um spending money, right? So I figured that night, right, I was gonna go out, right, have a good time, right, and 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 and, and have a blast. So I separated my money. Had money to spend, buy clothes. Then I took a hundred dollars out because I was going to use that that night. So I put the hundred in my, I think it was in my right pocket, right. And then I put the. By this time, I think I was down to about nine hundred dollars. I had one shopping, so I had a hundred in this pocket and about eight hundred in my other pocket, and didn't think nothing about it. So I'm out at the mall, hanging out, and lo and behold. Um, it was time for me to get home. So I had my buddies that were going to come pick me up from the house later on that day. So I needed to get home and um, I didn't have a car at the time. So one of the things in Baltimore is you can catch what they call a hack. And a hack is just you waving a person down and they take you where you need to go. Uh, people have caught hacks. We've been old for over 30 years in Baltimore, right? I grew up catching them. So never thought nothing about it. Wave somebody down, saw a hat. The person was like, oh, yeah, man, I'll take you home, right? So, cool, right? Guy was a um, real cool guy. Jump in the car, and I got bags of clothes, and got ready to take me home. So, in the process of going to the house, um, I think we stopped at a store, and I do remember we were about a mile away from my house, and the car started making noise. And I remember, like, thinking to myself, okay, you know, what's going on with the car? So, the guy says, man, let me get out and check it real quick. And I said, okay, not a problem. You can check it. So, guy gets out and check it, and when he goes in the, like, towards the back to get something, lo and behold, he actually got a weapon. Right. So he gets the weapon and he robs me. Right. So not only so he takes um, eight hundred dollars and he took well, I'm afraid, he took all my money and he took uh, um, he took my clothes. Now, what was crazy? Because this dude, I'm a big guy. Right. This guy happened just to be a big guy, too. Right. So he robs me. And, and as I'm getting out the car with my clothes, because I figured, OK, you took all my money. Right, I would get my clothes. He looked over and said, "No, nah, man, you like you're about my size. Leave the clothes too." So he took all the clothes. Right. So then he threatens my life, tells me to walk away. So at this point, I'm defenseless. Nothing I can do. I walk away. So I turn around. I'm walking away. Uh, I'm going home. Right. And I'm walking down the street. I pull out my phone. So he didn't take my phone to call my mother to say, hey, look, mom, about a mile away from the house, um, your house. I'm about to walk over. I just got robbed. And she was like, whoa, you know, she was ecstatic and everything. I said, don't worry about it. Everything will be OK. I'm, I'm fine. I'm safe. You know, um, it could have been worse. Right. Because I could have lost my life. Right. I could have died. Right. But that's not what happened. So I take my phone and I go to put it in my right pocket. And as I'm feeling in my right pocket, I reach down and I pull out. A hundred dollars. And right then, and then. I knew God was talking to me. When you think about it, that right. God left me exactly what, what I took from another person. Think about that, right? I had $1,300, right? God took $1,200 from me, from me. He allowed $1,200 to be taken from me. And he left me with $100. See, I sold, right? I took something. You, you reap what you sow. I, I, I put something out there that was negative. I did something, right? I, I, I was dishonest. I took $100. And once I did that, I had began to lay down a path where God was going to discipline me. See, I didn't realize even when I wasn't saved that God was still working in my life. He was still disciplining me. He was still chastising me. He was still chasing me. But the moral of the story is what you give, you get back. Right? What you do, you get back. I do understand grace and we understand how grace works. And, and, but, but, but we have this thing also called obedience. But understand that you do reap what you sow. Whether it's in this life or the next, what you put out, right, 
what 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 the things that you do are not overlooked. So you probably come from great households, great families, but here it is, man. A lot of you guys, and I especially believe this is message is probably cut out for you guys in battalion, um, and maybe even some stock gators, but you're on your pathway to be a grown man. You're on your pathway to 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 step out um, into this world, right? Uh, and it's going to be a lot of temptation to do a lot of things. But I will hope that this story helps you remember that you reap what you sow. Um, um, and always try to remember, man, a lot of times, I mean, this is not so much biblical, but this just might be life. But I do believe God allows it. Man, when you put something out there, when it comes back, it has the potential of coming back to you way worse than what it is. You figure I took a hundred dollars from a person and that person never saw me. They don't even know who I am. They don't even know who did I exist. Um, they probably had another hundred dollars. They sent back in and paid their mortgage. Didn't think nothing about it. Right. Probably. But I got robbed. Right. Uh, a person could have took my life. Right. I could not be here today. Um, and that some of that money was supposed to be for bills as well, right? So a lot of things happened to me, right? And that instance of everything that was going on, right? So, so I, I just hope and pray that when you hear this, that you take what I'm saying and take heed, and uh, and allow your mind to understand that. You have to make choices that are wise, all right? Choices that are going to um, bring glory to God, right? Choices that are going to make your parents proud. Choices that are going to put you in a good good light. Um, don't ever think, right? This is a perfect example that no one sees it. God sees everything. And you can't hide from God. This is a perfect story to let you know you cannot hide from God. And I hope that you remember this forever. I hope you remember this story. Hey, I remember the regional director did a video and he told us a story that, guess what? You can sneak and do whatever you want, but God will see it. And at some point, when the Bible says that the unrighteous do not go unpunished, that justice will be served. God will deliver on his word. So, the story of the $100 bill. Remember it, that you reap what you sow. So, try your best to sow godly things into the society during your lifetime. Take care.